spring equinox. Now we're going to delve deeper into the mysteries of spring. What is an equinox? Equinox is the point of balance across the wheel. Because we sit in a wheel and we're going around the wheel. We've done in bulk and now we're at spring equinox at the point of balance. And there's another equinox opposite it at autumn equinox. So we're at this point now of spring equinox. Fire is equated with the spring equinox because right now the sun is coming back. It's bursting through, bringing through that energy which will begin to burst through into, through into the seeds which will bring that new life. And that's coming from the sun. The fire of spirit that lives within our body is known as the Kundalini fire that lives within the base chakra and can rise up and travel into the crown chakra, which can bring illumination of spirit. So we're not separate from that fire that's in the earth. The earth that's bursting forth to bring forth that life. So we feel it, we feel connected to that energy that's coming through now. As we've sat in all the, the dark of the winter and the cold, the sun has been in the earth but now it's rising up and we feel that rising through us in our creativity. This knowledge has been with us for thousands of years and is understood in many traditions and in the Christian tradition. However, they do not touch and talk about it in this way, but it is connected very much to Mary Magdalene and Christ. But they would work, walk barefoot upon the earth. And in doing that, that energy from their feet would travel up through their beings and they feel the spirit of the earth, of the connection to the divine and to the sky. However, essentially, there are different types of fire in human condition. Fire of matter, which produces heat, light, warmth and warms our food, heating and illuminating our homes and cities. That is fire, that is part of this energy now. There are emotional fires that live within us, which can rage as anger and hatred, grief and sorrow. As these emotions are expressed, they can bring heat into the body and can burn, especially those who come into contact with those fiery vibrations, because everything is a vibration. So the fire, if you carry that fire, you have to learn, if you're, say you're an Aries, and this is the Aries time now, you've got to learn to ride the fire. You've got to learn to understand your fire and how to manage that fire within your being. For fire is quite dangerous and it has to be managed. There are mental fires that can, clear, that can burn clearly with inspiration, awakening and transforming all in its path, or it can create crazy times, craziness. So we have to learn to balance that. Then there is our spiritual fire, Agni, which can illuminate your soul. We have to treat all fire with respect. Fire of mind, symbolically fire represents the mind. It's like a flickering flame dancing from one thought to the next. The quality of our mind depends upon the substance of our thoughts. Combined with the emotional and spiritual fire flowing around that flame. Wind can influ influ influence the flame of the mind as it blows around the flame, fanning the flames so beware of too much spiritual wind. Water or emotions can dampen the flame, bringing it under control, or it can put the fire out if there is too much dampness or water. This is understood very much in things like um, acupuncture. For they, 
represent, they understand when you have a dampness in your body or too much fire in your body and they take a pulse and they read what is happening actually in your body through the elements of earth, air, fire and water. It's all connected to our journey of connected to the earth and to the, to the sky and to all the elements. The mind by itself tends to be critical, harsh, self-serving and uncaring of others and of the planet. We've been living in a time of the mind over the past thousands of years. Mind has risen above its purpose and station and needs to allow for intuition and emotions within our psyche. Its two places in the is the servant of the soul, not master or mistress. Mind is a vehicle through which subtle vibrations pass through to anchor our intuition and inspiration. Mind is very good at mechanical thinking, holding information, giving out information, sorting things out, memorizing, and imagination, imagining the future. Done with the discernment of the truth with accuracy, perception, and creativity. Then the mind is more in balance with its intuition. Mind is an, is an undisturbed candle flame which produces clarity and insight when in right relationship to all the other elements. Mental visualization is an important tool in our developing spirituality, realizing we all are all creators with the creator, using positive affirmations and visualization to manifest our dreams. This is also taught in the Bible allowing ourselves to let go of what does not serve you anymore. Fire can be used ceremonially, both to cleanse the spirit and to strengthen the spirit. Fire symbolizes the fire of mind and the transforming fire of spirit. Traditionally, at this time, people would walk between two fires and drive their cattle between two fires. This is said to be like a blessing to actually walk through two fires. You're actually honoring the fire on the earth. At this time, light your own fire to Ostra. Now, Easter, here we have lit many candles. Ostra, who knows, known as Astara, queen of the stars, Hers is the green fire energy of spring. She ignites the fire of life in seeds in the earth, in all growing things, the sap rising. Ostra fire energy bursts everything into life, the festival of Easter. The festival of Easter is chosen at this first, as the full moon, the first full moon in Aries, the weekend after the first full moon in Aries, sorry. Eggs are exchanged, red eggs to symbolize rebirth, the color of menstrual blood. At spring Equinox, we honor Arto, the great she-bear, the plow in the sky. It is she, the great bear mother, who traditionally gave birth to humans, so it is said, Arta. The name Arthur comes from the name Arta, or heavenly bear. Arthur has connections with Avalon and the Irish race, whilst Grenier, the sun goddess, is connected to both Scot and Irish. In early languages in Britannia, the sun was considered feminine, known as the mother of all life. 
Many British and Neolithic sites are dedicated to the sun goddess. An entrance is built so that the sun can penetrate to the inner womb at either equinoxes or solstices. Some are dedicated with symbols of the sun goddess, Grenya, like Noath and Briath Nabon in the Bonny Valley in Ireland. It is said she rises and blesses the land by day and by night as the sun sets into the ocean. She descends into the waters of the earth, to wells and ponds and lakes to regenerate the world. Sulis is the goddess associated with hot springs. It is said the spring waters contain the goddess energy itself from the sun. Sulis, Sil or Selina, like Arta, is pictured as a bear mother and is particularly honoured in the West Country and in the Scilly Isles and in Bath. In Bath, the waters have a strong mineral content. The Romans replaced Sulis with Minerva, the goddess of war. However, Minerva was probably a nature goddess whose qualities were subsumed into a patriarchal ideal. Sulis is still present in Bath. Her fire lives within the water, for fire does live within water. That's part of its energy. That's when you drink real water from the source, you're not only getting the minerals, but you're also getting the fire. Because as the waters come down from the mountain and they run over all of the stones in the, in the streams, and as the stones hit together, they create a spark. And that fire is then in, lives within the water. And you can do that as, in your own bucket at home as an experiment. The fire of creative expression, our inner fire, needs creative expression. As we open ourselves to the spring fire energy, we automatically want to become creative. As we open to our inner fire, more and more creative energy flows through us. This energy comes from the source, the source being the sun, returning. We are co-creators with this fiery source. At this time, it's good to actually perhaps have a walk in a wood and see if you find a staff or maybe a wand or something that comes from the earth and craft it into your own personal connection with the earth. This is something that is done at this time. But also what can be done at this time is also to walk or make a labyrinth. A labyrinth actually helps you if you walk from the outer right into the center and you hold an intention, it creates balance. Outside St. John's here in Glastonbury at St. John's Church, a labyrinth was made. I, re I suggest everyone should walk the labyrinth at spring equinox outside St. John's. And it helps bring in the balance of the fire energy for the, for the next, for the whole of this year. Or make your own labyrinth. On the side of the wall on the way to St Nectings Glen there is a little labyrinth and you can trace it with your finger. Even if you just draw one and trace it with your finger if you don't live here near it in Glastonbury, you can look up how to draw a labyrinth. It's a very good creative thing to do. So now we've understood more about the fire of the mind. There is more, but that's where I will stop for now. Thank you very much. I'm Dechen Chodron, also known as Dechen Suzanne. Thank you very much. <laughs>